What's up everyone, Ibra here with Hurricane X and welcome back to another investigation video. What are we investigating today? Cooling on Ryzen Threadripper CPUs. That's right, my friends, we are finally getting around to testing both uh, air and liquid coolers to see which one can optimally cool an overclocked 16 core 32 threaded 1950X at four gigahertz. We have four contenders for this test. Two of each are from Noctua, the other two are from NZXT. Let's kick things off with Noctua. We have the U14S, which is their beefiest you know, cooler that comes with a 140 millimeter fan. And then we have the U12S that comes with a 120 millimeter fan. Uh, on the liquid cooling side of things, we have the NZXT X52 and their X62 coolers. Now our test system is gonna be the X399 build that I just built recently. So if you're interested, you can check that out right over here. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get into this. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Thermaltake Premium is now selling gaming chairs with carbon fiber-like leather material, standard bucket seat design with lumbar pillow and neck cushion, good adjustable armrest with a sleep recline built in. The chairs are available in multiple colors and different sizes. Learn more in the description below. All right, guys, before we get into the coolers and discuss the results, I want to quickly talk about Socket TR4 because back at Computex, I got a chance to check out some X399 boards uh, that came with the Socket TR4. And I was thinking to myself, how in the world would one cool such a massive uh, CPU? I mean, standard traditional AIO coolers or even air coolers wouldn't be able to cover the entire surface area of that die. I was also thinking maybe AMD would provide their own uh, proprietary cooling solutions or their own coolers uh, to complement these new chips, which wasn't the case until they officially launched Threadripper because they came up with a quick solution that adapted existing Acetec liquid coolers uh, by including a bracket within the packaging. This meant that enthusiasts or anyone who jumped onto Threadripper were only locked down to all-in-one liquid cooling solutions. Air coolers were totally out of question a few months ago. Until now, we're starting to see companies like Noctua come up with their own version of TR4 coolers, specifically designed for Threadripper. Now, if you recall our performance review of the 1950X and the 1920X, uh, by the way, if you haven't watched that, uh, you can check it out right over here. I tried a 140 millimeter AIO cooler, specifically the NZXT X42, to see how it could handle Threadripper's epic heat output. And unfortunately, it didn't do that great, even at stock settings. I was roughly getting around 90C under full load, and that raised a lot of questions regarding the massive heat output of TR. So I decided to make this video comparing air and liquid coolers on the 1950X to see how they can handle the heat. Uh, I obviously excluded the X42 cooler because I didn't want to kill my CPU, so... There you have it. Let's start with the least expensive cooling solution from Noctua, the NH-U12S TR4. It carries the same DNA as the original U12 series, except it comes with its own custom contact surface that's significantly larger than traditional coolers. This should essentially cover the entire die of the CPU, and it should theoretically result in better temperatures. It also comes with the signature NF-F12 120mm fan, so if you're looking for something compact, this is a really good option. But if you prefer something a bit beefier, Noctua has you covered again. Say hello to the NH-U14S TR4, a 140mm base cooler that shares similar characteristics from the original U14 series, except for that large CPU contact surface area. I also found something really interesting with this cooler's design, and this also happens to be present with the NH-U12S TR4 cooler, and that's the implementation of offset mounting options within the Secure Firm 2 bracket for better PCI clearance. Essentially, this allows the user to offset the cooler by three or six millimeters towards the upper edge of the motherboard, which then eliminates clearance issues between the TR4 socket and the top PCI slot. That's straight up brilliant. Unfortunately, my ROG Zenith Extreme board from ASUS wasn't able to accommodate the U14S with my GTX 1080 Ti installed on the first PCI slot. I tried all three offset configurations, but sadly, I was out of luck. So take good note of that. A quick fix to this was to shift the GPU to the second PCI slot, which still runs at X16 speeds, so I'm not sacrificing on performance. But ultimately, you know, you're left with the top slot that's totally unusable. I'm hoping this isn't the case for some other motherboards, uh, but the U12S fits in perfectly, even with the top slot occupied, so that's awesome. On the AIO side of things, I decided to stick with the X52 and the X62 from NZXT. I'm sure both these coolers don't need specific introductions because you know how they look and function. The X52 features a 240mm radiator, whereas the X62 features a 280mm radiator, so I'm excited to see how well both these could handle 
the overclocked 1950X. And the last thing I want to mention here before we get into the results is thermal compound application, because let's be honest here, with Threadripper CPUs, it's a bit messy because there are so many ways to approach applying thermal compound because of that large CPU die. Uh, so I decided to stick with the X pattern for the AIO coolers, but Noctua suggests a completely different technique. You'll first need to apply nine small drops onto the heat spreader, creating a square three by three pattern, and then add four larger drops in between, as you can see here. So I'm gonna test it out this way for the U14S and the U12S. So I just unmounted the X62 cooler from the TR4 socket and just check out this, the amount of surface area that the thermal compound took on the X62 cooler, the CPU block. That's, that's the entire, um, that's the entire copper plate, guys. Now, I just uh, unmounted this uh, U14S cooler for uh, socket TR4, and check out that thermal paste. I mean, really? Nocto really wants you to cover the entire IHS, and I understand that it does, did it, I mean, it did a pretty good job with the, with the, with the temperatures, but... Yeah, that's that's a lot of mess to clean up for uh, for the U12 that I'm going to pop in uh, after. So, are you guys ready for the results? Here you go. I used Ida64 stress test on the 1950X and HW monitor to monitor the CPU temperatures. Let's kick things off at stock settings since it gives us a rough baseline as to how each cooler stack up with one another. As you can see, I kind of expected this. The Noctua coolers blows the doors off both the AIOs from NZXT by a fair margin. If you pay close attention to the low temperatures, there's a difference of 12 degrees Celsius between the U14S and the X52 cooler, and roughly a 1 degree difference between the U12S and the X62 AIO cooler. That's amazing! But if you guys are wondering, I did also manage to run the stress test a little bit longer on the X62 cooler just to see if the temperatures are rising over time, uh, but that wasn't the case. It did stay rock solid um, as you see here. But would this order keep up when we overclock the CPU? Actually, it does. The Nocto coolers are still staying strong, cooling the monstrous 1950X at 4 GHz. I was really surprised to see the U14S at 60C because that means we still have a bit more headroom with overclocking, if we're lucky enough. The U12S performed fantastic as well, giving us temps around 65C. The X62 also did a pretty good job cooling the CPU, just a few degrees warmer than the U12S, However, the X52 struggled to keep up. In fact, the system froze after 10 minutes into the stress test and the last recorded temp was around 87 degrees Celsius. That's 20 more than the X62. So I would stay away from this 240mm AIO if you're planning on building a Threadripper PC. Now let's move on to some acoustic tests. Well, I guess it's about time to wrap my thoughts on air versus liquid coolers uh, for Threadripper CPUs. Now, before I get into my conclusion, I wanted to quickly point out that um, this by no means is a CPU cooler showdown uh, because I could have added more coolers to see how they perform with Threadripper, but uh, this is just to test how air versus liquid would do on Threadripper. It's not specifically pointing out which cooler is the best. However, Seeing by those results, I am slowly leaning towards air cooling because I feel like if you're trying to build a Threadripper system, especially a workstation PC, and if you want uh, the best possible reliability out of that machine, you should probably stick with air cooling because you don't have to worry about uh, leaks or you know pump failures or you know all the other things uh, that might come down the line. With that being said, one of the compromises when you decide to go for an air cooling solution is clearance. You need to have proper room in order to accommodate the cooler. So, you know, pay attention to your motherboard, see if you have proper room. And of course, the offset configurations should help you. Uh, in my case, it did work out with the U12S, but unfortunately, U14S just didn't play out that well with the Zenith board. And I think that's where people might end up leaning towards liquid cooling solutions, because all you need to worry about is finding the proper room to mount the CPU block. And in most cases, in fact, every case, you should be totally fine, because 
uh, AMD does ship with an Asetek bracket. So I think you should be safe in that regards when it comes to compatibility. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on uh, air versus liquid cooling on Threadripper. Were you surprised by the results or you know, where did you expect the air coolers to outperform the liquid coolers before showcasing the results? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm Eber with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.